Okay, if you are on... Hi, hello, welcome. This is Monday. (laughs) (laughs) Hi, guys. Happy Monday. Hello, happy Monday. I hope you're having a good Monday. Yeah, this is Oddvice Podcast. I'm Mm. Alex Coe. And I'm Kristen McAtee. And if you're on visual... So we, if you don't know, we just got a lamp in our living room for the first time since moving in a year ago. Literally one year. June 1st marks one year and we just got a lamp. We've been sitting in the dark and then when we actually want light in our living room, we'll put on um, like 20 hours. Yeah. 10 free hours of bright white light on YouTube. Yeah. No ads. And like uh, YouTube red, which is nice. Right. And like the white screen on our TV will like brighten up the room. But it did the job. It, it did the job, but and it, was it felt a little like uh, psychotic. No, it felt like, like medical. In, like the ring. Yes. Like watching the TV. Like I felt like something was happening to us. We'd right. be like playing cards or like eating dinner and it's just, just white the abyss. Super weird. It was weird. Anyway, we finally do- indulged and got a lamp. It was $50. Right. Indulged. And, <laughs> <laughs> and if you can't tell, it's on right now and it's like warming up the set really nicely. Let us know if you guys like, like this coloring. It's Kristen nice. turned it on and tried it. I love it. It's super warm. I don't feel like the set was necessarily like too cool tone, but before this, I felt like it was, it was just kind of flat. You could tell it was studio lights. Yeah. This feels like a glow in the room. Like we're just in like a nice room. Oh, our shadows are more. Oh yeah. Hey. 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 <laughs> hey. We will so pussy. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> oh i just wiped my eye and i have fucking mascara oh, that's on. the worst i have makeup on today i'm not used to it because alex and i left the house yeah on a saturday on, on a saturday and I haven't done that in probably two months we picked the worst day because it's fucking pouring it's outside raining cats and dogs and we went all the way deep into brooklyn to mm-hmm. go to um this thrift shop um have you guys ever heard the macklemore song <laughs> it's where that was filmed <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> Damn near though, like L Train, probably like it's such a well-known thrift store in Brooklyn. No, it's probably filmed in the Seattle one. They have Some, an L- no, 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 just like oh. a Seattle vintage shop. Why? He's yeah, that's where he's from. He's Pike Place, Seattle, in Se- Seattle. To yeah, I think he actually said he like talks about Pike Place. Oh, maybe that's downtown. Oh. God, that song is so fucking That'll good. be our song of the day, Downtown by Macklemore. Yes, 100%. Kick it kick out the gate with that. Yeah. Thrift shop in <laughs> by Mac. And next week is going to be songs by Coldplay. <laughs> no, next week my song's going to be Wonderwall. Oh. Well. Ooh, Nickelback. What? Never mind. <laughs> I had a whole Say conversation it. in my head. Say it. No, I don't want to. I'm okay. high. I'm oh. like kind of high right now, so sorry. Do we have an ad? <laughs> nope. Nope. No ad. Okay. I'm high. <laughs> hi. I'm Alex. I'm Kristen. This is Advice. <laughs> oh, it's we purgatory. just keep going. In circ- oh, I'm sorry, guys. Please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. Pem <laughs> <laughs> Oh, my God. Oh, last night we watched Friends. Mm. That show is so funny, you Thank guys. you. That is such a silly show. It's so good. We watched um, Chandler and Monica's engagement episodes. It's a two-parter. And then we watched The Wedding, which is also a two-parter. And I was cracking up. Cracking up. It was so funny. There's not one episode that you'll sit and watch and not laugh out loud. Yeah. God, Joey is so funny. His doofy humor. And I don't always like the doofy character. Right. I don't always think. It's, sometimes, sometimes I think it's like corny. Right. And it's like, really? But right. it's actually, they're so consistent with his personality. Yes, it's everything. I was saying that last night. Like every character is so consistent. The writers are so consistent with their personas. And every scene, they all have the same place. Mm-hmm. Like it's a formula. Yeah. And I'm sure the oh, writers yeah. see it that way. It's like every scene in that show is a formula of everybody's weigh in yep. to make it funny for every type of viewer. They look at situations and they're like, okay, how is Rachel going to react? How yeah. is Chandler going to react? And they really give them like the time and space for each and every single character to have a place in each scene. And they're all a main character. Yep. That's crazy. I don't know a show that successful that has like equal um, equal main characters yeah it's no it's really um it's such a good show it's such a good show i and like i knew it was popular for a reason but i always thought it was just like nostalgic popular 
But no, it's like actually like a well done show. I can't believe the people who hate on it. They're just jealous. They are. Mm-hmm. They're jealous that they can't connect. Exactly. And they're just jealous that they're just right. jealous. Right. So yeah. <laughs> anyway. Enough about friends. No, I can talk. I can sit and talk about friends all day long. Link is off camera and she's sleeping. She looks so cute. So cozy. She's cozy on the floor. The way she's side eyeing us right now. No, she's such a biatch. (laughs) She hates us. She doesn't even want to be here. She doesn't. I'm telling you, she doesn't like me. But then sometimes I think she really does like me. And then I'm like, no, it's because I'm giving her food. Or she's excited I just got home. Right. Even after getting home of a 15 day trip after London, LA, excited for like five minutes. minutes tops. Right. And then she like, I was like snuggling her and she was like, <sighs> <laughs> okay, sorry. Time is not a thing for dogs. Well, must be nice. Uh, Kristen got weed delivered and <laughs> <laughs> she was like, no dude, it's crazy. It's so cool because it's, you text this number, you found it on Instagram, right? Yeah. And the way she was describing it, it sounded like a full on like 2012 plug. It is. And she was like, come with me when when I go and pick it up because we go outside our building. And she was like, every time I like walk up and it's just this guy in this red Civic or something. Red, and Lexus. He, red Lexus. And he just like oh, rolls down his window. <laughs> He's like, Kristen. And just like hands her a bag, no receipt. And then Kristen Nothing. hands him cash. Super sketch. Yeah, it's great weed though. Right. <laughs> and so I go down with her and it was the polar opposite of that experience. No. <laughs> We go down there and there's a guy like waiting outside and he has like a branded bag and it's this whole thing. And I'm like, it's like a modern experience. Right. I think they switched owners <laughs> because I'm telling someone you, someone probably bought them. Someone bought them out because it was total. Like I got their number from their Instagram. I literally like texted Pineapple them. Express. Remember how he would yes. go and deliver? It's, a, it's exactly what it was. Right. And it was, I text them. I say, can I place an order or like, is it usually my text is, is it too late to place an order because it's usually <laughs> late. Right. And they're like, no. And then they'll just send a screenshot of their menu right now. I'm like, okay, can I do like one of these pre-rolls an eighth of this, blah, blah, blah. And then they just send back. Yeah. Like, okay. What's the ETA? <laughs> 20 to 30 minutes. They've never been late. I'll tell you that. <laughs> they, are, they are on time, which I respect, respect the hustle. And then they just, they say, okay, it'll be, and they just give you your price and then they, they're cash only. So I thought it was... <laughs> No, and it's when? definitely just like a kid in high school. And but the branding is it. so cute. So now the the bag, like it literally looks like we got it from like Med Men. Right. I was like, oh, this is great. But I kind of miss it. And they're also cherry on top. They're a green bubble when you text them. Oh, yeah. It's not an iPhone. They, they got a Samsung. No, they got a Google phone. Google Pixel. <laughs> yeah. But when, the, when um, I went down with her to get to go pick it up the guy who handed it to her so um, cute so cute and he gave you the best wink oh, I, did, I missed it though it was like i'm so she said it after, she's like, did you see that wink i'm so particular about winks 100%. and you could either be a great winker mm-hmm. or you're not and it looks so like cringy mm-hmm. and i've only seen probably three solid quality winks my entire life and yeah. i said to you i was like i'm gonna clock that as like number three best yeah. wink Fuck. oh it was so good it was so good i wish i saw it if you could wink like that's a fucking flex yeah like the quick winks they're like yep like they're They're so natural they're like i know they didn't even think about that that their eyes just like squinted out of emotion yep yeah it's a it's a full like emotional reaction to some people am i doing it (laughs) can you guys hear that (laughs) (laughs) it's just like Ew, 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 ew. One time I was hooking up with a guy on my lunch Any break. Any at- <laughs> Do you remember that? He was in the car in front of us. Oh, yeah. That I was, was sick. Um, so we went back to my house. Was Kelly with us too? Uh, Probably. He might have been in the car with him. Oh, with him? Mm-hmm. It was like boys and girls. Okay. So we all went to b- back to my house during like lunch hour and just like hang out or whatever. And he at, like when we left me and Kristen were in my car and then this guy and um Kristen's boyfriend were in the car in front of us and he looked back in his rearview mirror to make eye contact with me <laughs> and gave me the world's best wink Ugh. and that was the moment where I like literally stopped in my tracks I was like Kristen he just, he just winked, winked at me, at me. <laughs> I think like winking is a thing I remember this really well I, I can still see it vividly in me my too. head me too. so vividly yeah, so um, if you're a winker out there, hot, hot, put it on your fucking resume because you deserve it. Yep. My grandma used to wink. 
Oh, she, had a good she one. looks like a winker. She'd do it when she was like messing around with somebody uh, and like got you in on the joke. Yeah. Like, like to like follow along with her. Love that. With my grandpa and stuff. R.I.P. She was a real one. <laughs> <laughs> rip grandma. <laughs> rip grandma and hab. Let's rip. <laughs> I, just, I, just, <laughs> I just registered what you said, Kristen. You're foul. <laughs> She's dead anyway. <laughs> I'm just kidding, Grandma. <laughs> the thunder. Go- <laughs> <laughs> what was that? I never. I didn't think that. Was, I didn't think that was gonna be the noise that came. Out. That noise. I wish I. Oh, we do have it recorded. I was gonna say I wish I could record that. We have it recorded on audio and visual. <laughs> Thank God. I want that to be my ringtone. <laughs> We could do that. Lily, can you make me a like a short Just clip? Like a sound bit of that. A sound bit of that. <laughs> Cause we can make it one of our sounds on our soundboard. Oh, yeah. We can upload it to one of those squares and we could use it. How would we use it? Who knows? <laughs> I feel like we'll we'll it would use us. Yeah, we'll know when the moment's right. We'll look at each other and we'll be like, it's time for the noise. <laughs> Oh my cheeks are! Oh my god! Oh god! Dad, do the thing. <laughs> EA Sports. <laughs> do <in> the game. <laughs> That's one of the best, most underrated vines. Oh my god, it is. It's so fucking good. What do you want? What do you want to talk about now? <laughs> I can't do that. <laughs> I know that's like what podcasts were. We um we've been doing this thing where we have kind of had a theme going with the movies that we've been watching at night. So we started with Mean Girls, and then we were in like the high school drama phase. So we went to John Tucker Must Die, and then after that, what did we watch after that? There was something in between John Tucker Must Die and Enchanted. Mean Girls. No, no, no. no. Mean Girls was first, then John Tucker Must Die, and then there was like a um. Princess Diaries. Princess Diaries. Yes. Then we watched Princess Diaries, and then we watched Princess Diaries too. Oh, there's that was like I loved Which those is, two days. Oh my god, me those too. Were good. Just, just as good. And then after Princess Diaries, we watched Enchanted, the first one, it's which so good. Kristen has never seen before. I and I didn't know anything about it. And then right before we watched it, Alex kind of like gave me the snippet. What an incredible concept. So cool. Ten out of ten. What an underrated movie. Mm-hmm. Like I know it has fame, but like it should be like a classic. Like a Disney classic. Right. Or is it? Maybe it is. I hadn't heard of it though until oh, you like haven't recent even years. heard of it. No. Oh. Huh. Like, yeah, I guess it is in the like, it's in a weird category. It's like new Disney. Mm hmm. Generationally. Like, yeah. it's not like fairy tale completely. Mm hmm. Because it's realistic and all the references to like New York and yes. the rats. And the rats are so, so good. So good. So if you haven't seen Enchanted, watch it and there's also a new one um disenchanted Mm, i know we gotta watch that still we should watch it i know jack harlow's new movie just dropped too and we looked up the ratings 2.8 2.8 it dropped i'm gonna see if it changed now that we're a few days away but fuck i did not think it would be that bad yeah it's it's (laughs) wait i wrote (laughs) white man can't hump It has a 28% on Rotten Tomatoes. It doesn't have an IMDb. Has this happened to you before? When you looked up a movie and you couldn't find the IMDb? Um, But I was going to say, it sounds like maybe people were like comparing it to the first one. Because the first one has like great reviews. Oh, yeah. I think it's like like a 6.8. It's a classic. um, And, you know, Jack Harlow's not, I don't know if he's the reason, but he's not an actor. So, I don't know. I haven't heard much about his acting in it. it. Did you find the? No. Metacritic says 38%, but I don't know what that is. 67% of Google users like this movie. That's high. And you know what I found? Like, some of my favorite movies are, like, fucking two point whatever. Let's see what Mean Girls is. I'm pretty sure Mean Girls is low. Really? Just kidding. It's a 7.1. Oh, my God. That's fucking incredible. That's so good. Okay, let's see what John Tucker Must Die is. Probably really bad. I go off IMDb. I've noticed I usually, my values line up with them pretty easily 5.7 john tucker must die okay i give it that yeah no i give give it it that it's one of those movies that i could just rewatch and rewatch and rewatch like i never get sick of it i don't think i could it's not to that side of the spectrum for me but i'm i'm not gonna say no but Mm. i'm not gonna be the one that suggests it Mm. princess diaries 6.4 okay i would give that a solid eight personally right 
so good. It's so fucking good. Also, her friend in the movie is a bitch. Oh, Lily? Yeah. Yeah. We noticed a few things in that movie, watching it now, that we didn't catch as kids. And Lily is like a bad friend. Right. She's she was like and like. And like pissed that she didn't tell. Like. It was. It didn't make sense. And she was like nagging on her that she was still upset about her dad dying. Right. She was like, like, it's been two months. Are you going to get over it? Are we still talking about that? She was like, my dad died. (laughs) Could you imagine if I was like, Kristen, get the fuck over it. (laughs) Honestly, it'd help. Like. (laughs) I'd be like, thanks, bitch. Like, I needed that. <laughs> so maybe I do get Lily. Get it together. Sometimes you need that. Maybe maybe we need to be more Lily. Ugh. I couldn't. No. Monster. I couldn't tell someone to get over get it. Get the fuck over it. <laughs> <laughs> we do. Okay, so we're going to tell you guys what we're wearing, and then we're going to get into it. Oh, my God. Take it away, Alex. Um, Guess what? If you're not on visual, I'm going to give you three seconds to guess what I'm wearing. There's only one of two things. It's my Kid Cudi sweatshirt. Got it intergalactic i got it right did you Mm -hmm. what socks are you wearing are you not wearing socks oh no i'm wearing the socks that you got me they say creative little fucker (laughs) and they're just like in santa monica circles and then i'm wearing my marameco socks that i actually think i i think i wore these last episode they're really cute though they're like funky striped colors and then an eddie bauer like collar the baby brand yeah but remember we this is this is lee's and we said this we were like is it a baby brand? And then we looked it up and they and had like, like travel. They everything. had like everything. So not the baby brand, but they do have baby stuff. It's like a long sleeve collared shirt. It's just so polo. comfortable. Feel it. Long sleeve polo long shirt. Long sleeve polo shirt. That's nice. It's just, ooh, it's like heavy. That would be cute to put on after you play tennis. Ooh, yeah. After you know? sure. <laughs> right. When you're still in the tennis mode, but like clean. Yep. Yeah. That's how I'm feeling right now. Like you play tennis? God no, I would not like tennis. I went to Top Golf. Are you over it in like twenty minutes? So over it. It hurts. It takes a lot on your body. It hurts my hands a lot. Yeah. Okay, so last week we read your guys's confessions, and you guys did not disappoint. It was you guys, so fucking good. It, you guys sent in so many and so many good stories, oh and I feel God. like it. It was just um, a nice little refresh to like read what you guys are going through. Right. Uh, (laughs) Take the mic away, please. Right. Um, So we're going to do a little part two for you because we got so many last time. It would feel like robbery if we didn't. There were so many that we didn't get to. So we're just going to hop right into it. Kristen, do you want to go first? Sure. Ooh, kick it off strong. Subject line, toilet paper stuck in my asshole. (laughs) In odd vice fashion. (laughs) Right. Please keep anonymous. This happened with my ex. Long story short, we went out for breakfast that morning and I had to go pee. While I was peeing, I felt the need to poop. So I did. (laughs) Nice. (laughs) The writing of this is like to the point. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) It was a cute little clean poop. (laughs) You know, when the toilet paper comes out clean after you wipe. Uh, Yes, I completely understand. I remember when I wiped, the paper was a little rough and I didn't think of much of it. We went back to his place after things got a little heated as soon as we walked in, to be honest. My pants are coming down. I'm bent over on the table. He's struggling to stick it in because he had a little, a little ass dick. And I'm, oh my and God. I'm thick AF. <laughs> I love you. I love this combo. So obviously that killed the mood. And I'm like, let me just go pee BRB. When I wiped after I peed, a piece of toilet paper came down, which means he obviously had seen it when I was oh. bent the fuck over on the table. He never said anything and I didn't either, but it still haunts me till this day because I know that was an immediate ick for him. Even if you guys don't read this, it felt good to write out. I feel lighter now. Uh, Love you guys so much. This podcast helps me more than you know. Thank you for writing in. Maybe he didn't see it. No, I've actually heard that. um, I think I might have been talking about this with Tanner because I saw it on TikTok and I sent it to him. I was like, is this true? And it was a guy being like, there's like nine times out of 10 girls have toilet paper down there. And like, Are we just don't say anything. serious? <laughs> New insecurity unlocked. No way. Now I'm going to like triple check. I know. I know. I know, dude. Oh no. I think, I think it was Tanner. I don't know. Was, I did confirm with a male though, where they were like, nah, yeah, it's, it's it a does thing. happen. But, but he, I remember whoever I asked, they were like, we don't care. But right. like, yes, it does happen. That's probably I, why that guy didn't say anything Would you want to someone to say something? No. No. Because what am I? Okay, let me go get it off. Like, 
Yeah. What, am I, what do you want me to do about it? I, w- I feel like I would want him to be like. It, it would have to be after the fact. You couldn't say it during. You're right. I would I would shrivel up in a ball. You're right. I'd be super embarrassed. I would be super embarrassed. After though, we can crack up about it and then go from there. <laughs> I have a um a mole like right next to my butthole. Right. And I'm always so worried that someone's gonna think it's poop. <laughs> <laughs> that is so valid. No, that I'm always so, so it's like it's like in the perfect spot. It looks like a speck. But it's a mole, and I'm always so yeah, worried. Have you got it checked. I'm always so worried that someone's like it's gonna be dark, and they can't, they can't like they're gonna focus see on it, it and see that it's a mole, and they're gonna just think it's a little flaker. Ooh! I swear, if anyone's out there who's seen my butthole, it's a mole. It's poop. <laughs> it's a mole covered in poop. <laughs> Let's be real. I can't. I can't stop laughing in this episode. <laughs> it's the weed. It is the weed. Wait, sorry. This isn't a confession, but can I read it real quick? Sure. This is cool. The subject line is, my boyfriend is your number one fan. <gasps> oh my God, read it. Hi, girls. I loved you both since the time the first time I listened to the pod. I was navigating college during a pandemic as a healthcare major. Holy shit. Wow. Thank you. Um, dealing with a major breakup and processing many deaths and family issues. And you two were, you two were and are my light. Oh. You crack me up, make me cry tears of release, and truly, genuinely give the best advice in the book. You have allowed me to take a little over an hour weekly to step away from my stressful life and be placed in a space of good energy. Life has changed and gotten so much more fulfilling over the years while listening to you guys. I found the love of my life. His name is also Tanner. Oh my God. We giggle every time Kristen talks about her Tanner. I save the Monday episodes for Monday night and put the YouTube videos on my TV and chill in bed. As Tanner and I spent more nights together, he was now also watching on Vice every Monday. At first I was like, it, it was like, Anna, I don't want to watch this. Wow, wow, sissy baby shit. <laughs> sissy wow, wow. But then he realized that you guys are fire flames awesome. Oh my God, I love you guys. <laughs> Tanner looks forward, and that's in caps, looks forward to watching advice, multiple receipts attached. It is so <gasps> fucking cute, and he makes me literally over the moon happy. He always tells us that us three would be the best of friends. I just need to tell you guys because I knew you'd also think it's hella cute. Anywho, love you guys more than you'll ever know. I think we're kindred souls. <sighs> Have... A great start to the week. Love you. Oh, my God. And there's screenshot text. She said, I got a 98 on my exam. He said, fuck yes, baby. Killed that shit. Uh, She said, thank you. And he goes, you know what tonight is? She said, advice. He said, hell yes. I got cool ranch Doritos too. Perfect night. And the next one, he said, (gasps) baby, it's Monday night. She said, yes. He said, advice will be on. Hype. He's like excited. I'm obsessed with you guys. Wow, this is everything. <gasps> Thank you for writing in. This makes us so happy. And hi, oh Tanner. God. Hi, Tanner. Oh, my Shout God. out, Tan Tan. Shout out, Tanner. That's crazy. Wow. Oh. Oh. Thank you for writing that in. That was I really want to cool. meet you guys. I know. That was so fucking sick. Okay, go ahead. Okay. Uh, this one is called Car Crash Cheater. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> in all it. caps, you say, please don't say my name on the pod. <laughs> I'm going to do it. <laughs> it's a really cool name. You guys want to hear it? Oh, my God. <laughs> that person's listening right now. I was like, fuck. <laughs> I'm just like, no, 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 no. No, no, don't do it. No, 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 no. <laughs> don't. Don't do it. Wait, you should go get a can and do your. <laughs> hey, it'll be too loud on the podcast. But I could do this thing. Ah, we'll talk about it later. <laughs> right. A okay. A little cliffhanger. Okay. <laughs> We'll, do, we'll, we'll put say, it on Patreon. We'll say, I was going to say, we'll put it on Patreon. We'll, uh, we'll upload a video of her doing it. <laughs> oh my God. It'll be like a minutes. six second video. <laughs> oh my God. I'm okay. getting a laugh headache. We uh, have to stop yeah, laughing. I'm sorry, guys. No, no more, more laughing. laughing. Okay. So six years ago, I was in a relationship with a girl and things were getting rocky and ugly and just a mess. Randomly, I started talking to this other girl that I knew and we started hitting it off, chatting it up and we'll, well, let's be honest cheating okay <laughs> i don't condone cheating i was 21 and dumb okay so she would come to my job every day while i was on break for about two months maybe i can't remember how long trauma i'm losing my memory lol and one day she gave me a hickey and while i couldn't let my 
girlfriend at the time see it because, duh, cheater, can't get caught. And she lived with me, so I didn't have time to hide it because she was home already. Well, my plan was go home and have sex with her. Fuck it. Well, let, well, karma hit me right in the fucking ass because I got into a car accident on my way home. Oh, wrecking my, my car, still fucking went home and did the deed and made her give me a hickey in a specific spot. How did she not see yeah, it? Yeah, she did not see it going in. Yeah, you know the fucking spot from the other girl. Shitty, I know. Well, I fucking got away with it and then had to tell her about my car after the deed. I've never told anyone about this besides my BFF. Please don't tear me apart, LOL. I love the podcast. I found you ladies randomly on a podcast app and oh, loved it. Love y'all. Oh, that's cool. Well, thanks for, for listening or watching. Sticking around. Yeah. This is crazy. Um, Instant karma. I feel like that's all I could say. Yeah. Kind of like you said it. I mean, yep. and you still did it. Wow. I just, I couldn't. That's one of those situations where I can't imagine how that felt. Like I putting myself in those shoes. Like I don't think I would have had the pulse to do it. Right. I would and have like, like melted, but there you got it off your if, chest. If you like, maybe you could have just like brainstormed <laughs> for like 20 more minutes and tried to find a way to not have her. Like that's messy. Yeah. The fact that she gave you a hickey in the same spot just to cover up, cover up your mess. Oh. She doesn't know. Oh. Okay. That one stings. Mm. But your secret's safe with us. Yep. Unless I say your name. <laughs> da -da -da. <laughs> okay, next one. The subject line is burnt to a crisp. Uh-oh. Hi, I hope it's not too late to send this in. Before I tell the story, you can keep me anonymous. But I am on the hella tier, and it's not that hard to figure out who I am based on my e email mm. address. LOL. Anyway, I thought this was too good to not tell. My wild story takes place in August of 2022 in the Appalachian Mountains in Tennessee. Some backstory, I have a lot of social anxiety and severe PTSD, so leaving the comfort of my, home, my own home is quite a feat. I have also always been clumsy and tend to burn myself with hot tea all the time, but I usually can control myself in public. That is, until this gruesome day. As an undergraduate, I was thrilled when I was approved to take my first graduate class, but there was a catch. Part of the class was a week-long trip to a remote center for education and social change. But let me get this straight. This place was practically a temple, by far the most sacred experience and people I have ever witnessed. Anyway, I decided to take the leap. Little did I know I would embarrass myself beyond anything I could ever imagine. Mm. The morning of the near fatal event, I was wearing my brand new white blouse and first pair of Lululemon leggings to show off my style in front of all the graduates. And we were gathering in a room of rocking chairs to discuss the agenda for the day. I brought my own 40 ounce thermos on the trip because I'm practically addicted to tea, hot tea. And I planned on filling it up every morning and drinking it throughout the day. Now, this thermos does not just keep tea warm. It keeps tea scalding hot for over 48 hours. Uh oh. As I planned, I had prepared tea when we were gathering in a mug the center provided. I placed the mug in between my legs and got this huge, I mean huge, thermos out to pour my tea. Let me remind you, I wasn't sitting on a rocking chair, but I, I suppose stability wasn't the first thing on my mind. Anyway, I started to pour the tea, and I guess the thermos was a little heavier and fuller than expected. So the tea splashed into my mug, splattered on my legs, and I jumped a little, causing me to keep pouring the thermos oh, no. at incredible speeds into the mug thus causing the mug to overflow onto my thighs. Fuck, oh. I could feel this. I was so stunned, I poured the entire 40-ounce thermos of tea onto my vagina. Oh, my All God. I could do was shake and stutter while trying to stand up to get out of this puddle of scalding hot liquid. Through leggings, too? Right. My plan on being subtle around all these graduate students and activists I admired quickly started to unravel oh. as they obviously noticed what had happened or at the very least that my white blouse and pants were soaked. Immediately, they rushed towards me, took my, took my blouse and started running it under cold water to get the stains out and tried to comfort me. To be honest, all I could think of is how embarrassed I was, but after about 30 seconds, the pain started to hit. Just when one lady jumped up and proclaimed she was a paramedic 20 years ago and needed to make sure I would be okay. Oh. She practically interrogated me about the incident and I and where I felt pain and asked to check it out for herself. But I wasn't about to make this trip any more embarrassing than it already was, so I lied and told her I just got it on my legs and it didn't even soak through that much. Oh, no. She finally let up and at this point I was in so much pain. 
Honestly, I don't know how I got through the day, let alone that week, because I could only hobble around. Oh my the swelling God. and the black and blue blistering <gasps> up everywhere was outrageous. Anything touching my legs was incredibly painful, but I had no pants that weren't skin tight. Oh my God. I had to pretend to shower because it was just too painful and I could barely use the bathroom without losing my breath from the pain. The swelling and blisters didn't subside for a few months. Oh my God. Making for a pretty painful summer. Fast forward to today. I have scars absolutely everywhere that remind me of what my courage, but as of today, I am pain free. However, even though I'm physically and emotionally scarred from that experience, it didn't teach me a lesson. I still drink tea all day, <laughs> every day from that dang thermos. On a sort of related note, I just graduated from college two years early last week. Holy shit. And I wouldn't have got through without you guys. I'm kind of freaking out about the future and not doing school full time for the first time in a while. Any advice? Thanks. Ta-ta for now. Oh. Holy fuck. I like felt that as oh, I read it. Oh my God. I can't believe. Did you? I mean, oh. you didn't really say, but when you got home, you didn't go to the doctor to get like oh, bandages right. or anything. Yeah, burns are no joke. Fuck, I'm dude. glad you're feeling okay now. Um, Scarring on thighs. I, I actually have some scarring from a psoriasis breakout I had about a year ago, but I put uh, bio oil on it and it That's helps great. a lot. So I would recommend bio oil on your thighs mm -hmm. and sunscreen. If you're going outside, it'll help those scars lighten up over time. I don't know what they look like, but I, I know it can, can't hurt to try those things. And fucking proud of you for finishing college two years early. Two years early. That's like a, that's a long time. That's yeah, quite that's the, a big chunk. The to jump. That's amazing. Um, it's so normal to be freaking out about the future right now. You don't need to have it all figured out. Take it day by day. It's It will be an adjustment, but you are more than capable of it. Mm -hmm. This is what you've been preparing for. Yep. Like, think about that. You've been doing all of this work quite literally for this moment and for yep. this phase in your life and just embrace it. And it's going to be scary. You're going to be uncomfortable, but it's going to be worth it because you put all of these years and all of this work. And I'm sure so much into these, this so much into this that's like projected you forward to like what you're about to do so yep. you deserved it you earned it and just like sit with it you're worthy of it mm -hmm. okay this one's kind of crazy okay confessions the reason i started watching Kristen. Oh, why am i scared <laughs> Hey guys, what's up? My name is Walter, just like the guy on TV that deals with meth. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. I hope you always introduce yourself like that. Mm -hmm. So I missed the first confessions and almost missed the second one. So hopefully this doesn't sound like too much of a mess and I'm not too late. Nope. Right on time, Walter. Mm. So I want to confess something that's a bit cringy, and that's the reason I initially started watching Kristen's content. And because it is involving Kristen, if it makes you uncomfortable, first off, I sincerely sincerely apologize. And secondly, you don't have to read this on the podcast. If it does, just delete the email. It never happened. Aww. So I'm going to let Kristen decide if she thinks this is uncomfortable. Okay. So a few years back, I was going through a really bad breakup. I would probably consider it to have been the first time I fell in love with someone. And I stumbled upon Kristen in my YouTube feed one day and started watching because Kristen looked exactly like my ex. For a couple months as I watched, I saw nothing but the person I spent my time and wanted to be with. I wasn't even fully paying attention to videos, unfortunately, but as time went on, I eventually got over my ex and realized she and Kristen look nothing alike. <laughs> my sad boy eyes have bamboozled me. I mean, they both have curly hair, I guess. But anyway, it's been a long time now since then and realization. And now I watch because I see Kristen as Kristen and she's oh. genuinely entertaining. And with Alex, it's only doubled. P.S. Alex is my little sister's name. And I thought oh. that was cool. Cool. Wow. You both are dope. Sorry for the cringe. Again, sorry, Kristen, if you're feeling weirded out by this and hope you both keep living it up. P.S. Part two, my favorite advice episodes were Am I the Asshole and Ace the First Date. That helped a lot, actually. Ooh. Later, with the peace emoji. I don't think that's weird at all. I fuck with you, Walter. Yeah, I like you, Walter. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think that's weird at all. I I mean, the way I look and the way she looks, neither of us can control that. So if there's resemblance, there's resemblance. And there's right. I don't think that's weird for you to see resemblance in people well, who might look alike. Right. Like, and oh. we, like, literally every single time we turn on the TV, we're like, oh, my God, that person reminds me of this person. Yep. We constantly, like, relate people, like, people and faces and um, mannerisms back to people that are in our lives. Like, yep. we say it all the time. We always say, oh, they're cut from the same cloth. Yes. And I mean, I've even, there's one, uh, there was one TikTok of Travis Barker and he was like 
in the background of Alabama, his daughter, mm. the background of that TikTok. And I watched it so many times because it looked like Tanner. Yeah. There's been so, there's so they many. They look so similar. Yeah. But it was, I have to actually find it. I don't, I don't think I ever sent you it. He looked just like Tanner. And I feel like it's the same thing. Like, yep. was it creepy that I was looping that TikTok because it looked like somebody that I like? Like, no, no. It's just a resemblance it's, and resemblance. Yeah. And it's cool to see other faces that resemble like personalities that we right. know. I know. It's like, you know, we're all, we're all connected. Everything's connected. I've actually, I, it's so, I feel like you get told a lot that you look like other people. I have only been told I look like other people. I don't get that a lot. Oh, I feel like you do. Uh-uh. I feel like I'm even like, I've sent you TikToks where like this has your energy. Energy. Yeah. But like, I thought you meant like, uh, visually. I mean, we had a girl in high school who looked, you guys looked alike. That, I know. I, I can probably think of like three people that I've been compared to. It was Chrissy in high school. It was... Uh, uh, Liz from My Life is Liz. Yep. And then um, Monica Everett from College Park, too. Yep. And it was then, all like that era. Uh, who's the girl who oh, um, she hosted Love Island one year? USA. 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 <laughs> USA. <laughs> US Love Island. Um, Ariel. Uh, Ariel Vandenberg. Oh, I don't. Th- we have similar like facial expressions, but. I, I it, don't think it it's the like it's like the cut from the same cloth thing okay okay the cut from the same cloth thing I get what you're saying I thought you meant like literally uh yeah no I don't think, I don't that's think it's weird. creepy at all but I'm I'm glad I helped you through your breakup yeah I'm glad you're doing well <laughs> now and thanks for sticking around <laughs> okay next one the subject is secretly wanting to 180 my life nothing wrong with that hi Kristen and Alex first I wanted to start off saying I love you guys and I hope your day's going well I love you Please keep this anonymous I am 24 and I don't know what I'm doing. (laughs) I know this is normal, but this isn't for me, LOL. I have always known who I am, what I want to do, what I want to achieve, etc. And for some reason, since January of this year, I have no clue about anything. I've been in a relationship for seven years and at, at the moment, I'm unsure if he's the one. He's a great guy, but this is this the happiest I will ever be? He is kind, loyal, hardworking, everything good, but we don't have the same humor. I miss Ooh. laughing so hard until I piss myself. And I ended up getting that, but sometimes I think I'm insane for doing that. Like, I am so happy to start working on a farm, but how is this furthering me in the working industry, LOL? If you can't tell, I'm very much a planner and an in-the-future thinker that suffers from anxiety. I have also been in the mood to travel anywhere and everywhere solo but I'm scared of the dark and not a fan of airplanes. So I think I may be going through an identity crisis. Any advice on how I can tell, or excuse me, how I can feel like myself again in my own body? Have you all ever been through this? This really made me feel better writing this down. So even if this isn't read on the podcast, I appreciate the safe space. Love y'all. Oh my gosh. I don't, I hope this makes you feel better, but I know sometimes in these situations, it's like the worst thing to hear. This is very normal. Mm-hmm. what you're feeling and I, I totally relate to this I know that could feel like okay well fuck how still how do I get through it you this is one of those waves you just gotta ride at 24 um I went through a similar thing I think like 23 but I feel like I was like getting out of it at 24 but the rel- relatively the same time and um it could be very hard but I I promise it's naturally going to kind of unwrinkle itself yep um the disconnect of senses of humor sense of humor between you and your partner is really tough because like for me personally it's such a standard and sense of humor has the ability to really like um ease tension when you guys are not on the same page and it really is magic like it works wonders and you ask a lot of people who've been together for 30 years and they're like so what's the secret and a lot of the answers are laughter yeah and if you're not getting that from your partner that's really hard yeah um i I, so i don't know i'm not gonna sit here and tell you like break up because you're gonna find someone who is gonna have that but like you just need to like take a look at how you picture your future with this with this person and your standards and if you want to be in a relationship in 50 years and when you're old and gray and senile 
and what do you want out of the, that relationship at that point? Because if laughter and being able to joke and sense of humor is one of them and this partner fully isn't giving you that, then that's something you need to consider. Yeah. That's, I feel that's like really if, hard. If you're second guessing it too, that's also your answer. Right. Um, it's normal to have like the kind of intrusive thought second guesses here and there when it comes to like life things. But if this is Always. weighing on you, then that is, I think that's your answer in itself. And your push to like solo travel. Maybe that's yeah. another, you know, spark in your brain where you're like, you need to be alone. You need to be alone. Yeah. And you worrying about um the farm job being like kind of off track of like career things. I think that's exactly what you need right now. Right. Take this job, try and plan a trip somewhere and try and get through your, your flying anxiety. I know that's easier said than done, but like if you can push, I think the combination of those two kind of like unplanned plans mm -hmm. will shake up the energy in you and give you some new inspiration. You might even find something out there that kind of creates a new calling for you. You might even meet someone right. like the, the trips like that solo trips every solo trip I've ever been on in my life has seriously turned my life mm. my last one was to New York and look at where we're living like There's I got reason. home from that trip and was like I'm moving to New York I'm not saying that'll necessarily happen like moving wise but even before that like I always come back with like a new mindset a refreshed mindset mm. clean slate motivation like I think you need a reset I think you're right. feeling stagnant right now and that's what's normal Feeling stagnant is normal, but feeling stagnant and sitting in it and like being okay with it, that's when it can create just like sadness, and resentment towards the people around you. Like you're noticing the stagnant energy, go with it, break through it. Yep. Okay. Next one. I would like to remain anonymous. I also can't believe I'm sharing this story. <laughs> so my best friend from high school had a younger sister, a couple of years younger than us. I had a cousin who was a notorious man whore. Uh, I honestly thought he was kidding when he said he would collect nudes from girls he was talking to, but I guess it was true. Ugh. Ugh. Oh my Trash. God. I never understood what the point of obtaining nudes was. Maybe an ego thing? Yeah. Maybe. Creepy. <laughs> Just maybe. Ego. Ugh. So my cousin ends up flirting a bit with my best friend's sister online. My younger sister, my cousin, and I end up driving somewhere one day. He talks about his nude collection from various girls in school to us. And he literally tells me he has my best friend's sister's nudes. This is like he's really weird. sick. It's like a trophy thing. Ugh. Yeah. My sister and I tell him he's lying. There's just no way. When I tell you this man just casually whips out the picture to show us, <gasps> we both are just in shock. I've known my best friend's sister since she was seven years old, and obviously she's a teenager now that's sending people nudes specifically to my cousin. This is my deepest confession because I never told my best friend because I didn't want to snitch out her younger sister. I'm not best friends with her anymore, so thought I'd share this anonymously online hopefully it'll also encourage people to not send news okay she's not the problem no it's this guy who's yeah people like it's one thing to send nudes and like if you like trust the person you trust that they're not going to go showing other people and this guy's whipping them around like trophies Ugh. without the person's consent of seeing their naked body like this is sick you need to put this guy in check right this is why I don't send nudes. I hate this shit. Yeah, you just can't trust anyone. You continue to say, not worth it in my opinion, but be careful if you do. You'll never know who will end up seeing it. Exactly. Thank you guys for listening to my confession. Been listening to you guys since season one. Shit. Ah. I hate your cousin. I hate your cousin. I, I never say the word hate. That's, That's really disrespectful. He, like, someone needs to put him in his plate. Like, what did you do when he showed you, like... That's not okay. No. Oh, He's good job. Such like, ugh. if he and you might be thinking, oh, well, I'm his cousin. He just showed me real quick. If he was so quickly able to show you, he's, he's showing, showing everyone, everyone, else. everyone. That is so violating. Oh my god, it makes my blood boil. Yeah, you need to talk to him. That's and then revisit. That's <laughs> wild. I'm pissed. I'm pissed. Okay, next one. Hi, Kristen and Alex. This a poop story. <laughs> this is <a> subject line. <laughs> Hey guys, I've been a religious advice listener since you started. I love you both so much. It's crazy how similar our lives move. I guess we are similar age, 27. So maybe makes sense. You both have healed a little part of my inner child. So thank you. Oh. 
Anyway, let's get down and dirty, lol. I have never told anybody this before. It's been between my boyfriend and I for the past eight years. Wow, I get so honored like hearing the how buried all these secrets yeah, are. Yeah, you guys are just us. willing to tell us. I love it. Thank you. My boyfriend and I met when I was 19. I didn't have a party scene at FIT, New York Fashion School, mm. so hadn't drunk much before I met him. Anyway, our first New Year's together, mind you, this is only six months after meeting. I got drunk for the first time ever. I was at a college house party. I was throwing back straight whiskey. Wow. People handing me Jaeger bombs and shots. Ooh, you sound like my kind of party. All right. right? Uh, she said, do not recommend. <laughs> so, so dumb. Anyway, I'm sitting on the couch with my boyfriend. It's near the end of the night. I'm high. I'm on a high. <laughs> Sorry, two different things. <laughs> <laughs> I'm on a high and feeling frisky, lol. I whispered to him that I can't wait to go home to, you know. This immediately takes a turn and I go, I don't feel good. Uh -oh. I then get up and run into the kitchen and projectile vomit <gasps> into the trash can in front of everyone. Not my finest moment. My boyfriend then quickly helps me to the bathroom to clean up. I sit on the toilet to pee and in my pants, I find a big old surprise. I shit you not, I had fully shat myself when I vomited. I had vomited so hard that I shit myself, yep. Oh, yep. <laughs> yep. <laughs> my poor brand new man's was also drunk, helped me take my pants and Aww. underwear off, rinsed the shit in the sink, and put my clothes in a bag. He gave me his sweatpants to wear to walk home, and he walked home in his boxers. Okay, he's a keeper. Holy fuck. Oh, why am I going to cry? Oh, I'm literally tearing up. <laughs> this is 1 a.m. middle of winter in New Jersey. Holy shit. It was fucking cold. Oh, yeah, New Year's. Uh -huh. Oh, my God. He helped me shower and get oh. to bed. Side note, I had to be at my 9 a.m. shift at Forever 21 in eight hours, lol. Oh, I can just only imagine oh. how you showed up to that shift. Sunglasses on, yes. messy bun, just hoodie. <laughs> Why are we as teens so fucking unhinged? I was so embarrassed. He must have been like, what the fuck have I gotten myself into? <laughs> but it somehow made us closer because he did not make me feel bad or gross out at all. Maybe we've trauma bonded that night, lol, <laughs> because eight years later <gasps> and a move to Australia, we are going strong as ever and still joke about it to this day. Dating tips. Ladies, maybe try shitting yourself early <laughs> on and see how your man reacts. If he's helpful, he's a keeper. I hope my disgusting story made you giggle. Have a great rest of your night. No need to keep anonymous. My name is Christina and the man of the hour is Alex, lol. Whoa, okay, we run into so many like uh, Christian and Alex's, Alex yep. and Christina's, it's Christian like and Alex's. Us and other universes. Yep. And I think I you guys him. are us in another universe. Oh, yeah. We <laughs> and I'm the one pooping. Yeah, you're yeah. a pooper, and I'm like, okay, it's you okay. Clean it up. You can like, wear my sweats. <laughs> you have heck of sweats. <laughs> I'm heck of sweats. <laughs> <laughs> that is so cute yeah i live for that shit i love that you know what jaeger is not your best whiskey yeah, you know. is not your best friend you when know. you're just Eva if you're on the stomach. edge if you, yeah yeah i've been there i've pooped and thrown up at the same time too it's very common have you get real <laughs> i invented it oh yeah food poisoning thankfully i've never it always happens i've never that's how i know it's food poisoning when it's coming out both ends oh yeah Anyway, next okay. next entry. <laughs> Moving on. We had we had to have a poop story. Okay, this one's really good. The subject line is confession. Something light. Something light. Okay. <laughs> hey, so I figured you guys might want some light confessions. Yeah. Right? Love that. Okay, I'm gonna format this a little like Am I the Asshole? Which you guys should definitely do more of, by the way. Okay. We will. Okay, I'm twenty four male and my favorite fast food spot is Jersey Mike's. Catch me eating it at least once a week. Okay. <laughs> I have a Latin name that I appreciate and have learned to love, but when I order food anywhere, I always just say Dan because it's easy. This name is not one bit close to my real name. It's not a nickname, nothing. There's a girl at Jersey Mike's who I flirt back and forth with who, who thinks my name is Dan. We totally know each other's dog's names, our favorite colors, and just so much other small personal stuff about each other. So am I the asshole for continuing to let her think that's my name? LOL, I can't tell her, right? That shit's embarrassing, lol, but my friend has told me it's a little messed up, but that's my confession. Let me know what y'all think. Love, Dan. <laughs> you have to say something. Yeah, you definitely have to say something. If it's growing into something, now's the time. Okay, how could you do it? Just go in one time and be like... Oh, I'd go so light with it. So yeah. humorous. Yeah. Like, be like, okay, I, and say it like this, like, I have to confess something to you. And then she'll be like, what? 
and you just be like, not in a weird way, but my name's not Dan. I say it's Dan to like make it easier on people, but this is my real name. Yeah, maybe approach it with my government name and then lead with that. So it's like, it's not like real name, fake name. Exactly. Cause yeah. it's not that it's your fake name. It's you literally chose it because it, you felt it was easier to pronounce right. and whatnot. Like How, just, just like, like where else do you use Dan? I mean, you used it for this email, which I'm kind of offended. Tell us your real name. Yeah. What the heck? Yeah. So just say like, da like Dan is what I use. Like sometimes like when meeting new people, but I feel like now that I know you, like my government name is right. Boom. Yeah. Right? But you should say something because like, yes, yeah, say, oh my, if, that's non-negotiable. You have to say something. And like, if you want to continue flirting and stuff, it's just going to get deeper. Yeah. And it's your fucking name. Right. This person should know your name regardless. Like, right. Like it's your name. This is you. Don't like less, lessen yourself for other people's convenience. Yeah. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> is it crazy? This is a super crazy confession. <laughs> it looks short too. It's to the point. Okay. <laughs> okay. Oh my God. Okay. Subject line is confession from the vault. Ooh. I have dishydro dishydrotic eczema so about once or twice a year my hands will get inflamed and then all the skin will peel off over the following month i thought my password from the universe would be a soulmate who wasn't grossed out by my hands peeling i call it lizard time but turns out my dog likes to eat the peeling <gasps> skin so i guess i don't need a man just a man's best friend come on homie, homie hopper <laughs> no i feel like that sent me into a spiral I need to, I need to think about this one for a minute. I love you. <laughs> I love how you wrote that. You let your dog eat your dead skin. That's crazy. <laughs> Is the vet okay with this? No, I feel like this, I don't like it. <laughs> Should we read another one? I'll read another oh, one. Okay. But we're keeping it in. No, we're for sure keeping okay. it in. I was say, about to say like, I'm glad you got it off your chest. Yeah. Like maybe stop. That's, I just, I'm worried for the dog's health. Fuck. The man's best friend. No, like, that was funny. You're really good at uh, writing. Whoa. Okay. Uh, this is going to be my last one. The subject line is catfishing secret, kinda. Hi, ladies. Long time fan. First time submission. Mm. Love to see it. One secret that I will probably take to the grave with me was when I was in high school and faked a whole ass relationship. Whoa. That's, that's bad. <laughs> <laughs> Let's not do that. <laughs> Next time, don't. <laughs> For backstory, senior year of high school, one of my bestest friends wanted to make her ex jealous. What better way to make someone jealous than buy another boy? At this point, Facebook was on the rise. So we sourced pages until we were able to find a guy that had no mutual friends out of state and was her type physically. We ended up finding this guy from Washington, saved a bunch of his pictures and made a whole new page. From here, you can pretty much guess what we did to make her ex jealous. Mm. Needless to say, they did not get back together, LOL. A few months after we stopped pretending to be this guy, me and my boyfriend had broken up. I decided to do the same thing. Uh -oh. LOL. You've got to have it. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> I kept it to myself, though, because I was giving my best friend shit for doing it and didn't want to come off as a hypocrite, hypocrite, even though I was totally being one. LOL. Anyway, found a guy from another state that looks like my type. I did the whole thing, leaving comments on my page as him, liking oh photos, etc. Then my ex started going out a lot more. I, on the other hand, was not going out. So I went on the guy's page, found some of his friends, saved their photos, and made <gasps> fake profiles of them. I swear to you, I made six Bro. different accounts. LOL. I made them all private, though, of course. Of course. Because <laughs> it makes it better. <laughs> I would make it seem like we were commenting back and forth about oh. the party we just went to or comment saying something like, gotta pick you up in five. <gasps> Cause that's how people talk to each other. <laughs> just to make it seem like I was doing my own thing too. Oh no. I was even responding to my real friends as them just to play it off a bit more. LOL. I went as far as being in a relationship with this man. This lasted almost through the summer. I'm cracking up as I'm typing this. I was so sad. Oh, no. Eventually, I got so busy that I just couldn't man manage all those pages anymore. <laughs> so my new friends just randomly disappeared. 
one of my close friends still asks about him sometimes <gasps> and i would just say we had a falling out so i Shut unfriended them up. all i'm just embarrassed that i did it to begin with but even more embarrassed with how far i took it lol anyway i just want to say i look forward <laughs> to your episodes every week i'm so happy to hear about Kristen and tanner and i feel like i relate to you so much alex i'm a bay girl born and raised okay. so it oh it's always so cool to hear your bay references Keep doing what you guys are doing. Love you both. Gonna send this and delete now. LOL. Okay. <laughs> it's crazy because you sound so self-aware. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I can't believe you did this. I like, I guess it is harmless though, but it's just, you exhausted yourself. Like, I wonder if he was even looking. Right. Like, did he ever reach out and ask like, like who's this new guy? Like, like, like are you I sure he even dating. saw it? Like, was it worth it? Did it do anything? And like, how do you know that these people, because I feel like if your pictures are used on the internet, I feel like you would Google like pictures and stuff. Like reverse image search? Yeah. Did the people whose images you used find out? Well, this was back then. Right. It was a lot easier to catfish right when Facebook came out. Right. It's like middle school. And you just use like a hot person's photo. It happened so much then. That's why we have like reverse image search now and all that. But oh no. I, I guess it's harmless. Like <sighs> yeah, it's not, it's not right. like you were using it to like what you see on like the MTV catfish. Right. You're not like, talking to people. Yeah. You're not like talking to people and like falling in love. Like someone's falling in love with this fake person. Right. Like, you used it to your advantage. <laughs> I'm just trying to validate this for you because yeah. you're from the Bay and I like you. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa. Fuck. Don't do that again. Don't ever do that again. Don't. Don't do it again. Funny story, but that's all it needs to be. That it's stays in the past. Yeah, that stays in the past, not in your future. Don't repeat. We are moving forward. Yeah. This is not a habit of yours anymore. It cannot be. Shake it. Shake it off. <laughs> okay, this is my last one. Spicy teacher confession. Oh, Jesus. Another one. Hey, Kristen and Alex. Hello. I just wanted to start by saying I love the both of you and look up to you guys as my big sisters. I do have two actual big sisters, but oh. they just aren't as cool. <laughs> okay. You said don't tell them. Oh, uh, should we take that out? <laughs> don't tell them. Now into the spicy stuff. So in middle school. Oh, fuck, God. Seventh, eighth grade. I became pretty close with my history teacher. Simple because he listened. He was always interested in my dumb drama. He w was one of those history teachers who was also the football coach and wrestling coach. So I think he just thought I'd drop some drama on some of his boys. Jokes on him. None of his boys looked at me in middle school. Him and I used to hang out a little bit after school because I had to walk to my mom's office and had time to kill and he never left school right away. This led to a rumor of us hooking up and me going down on him. Like, oh come God. on, people. I was 14. Fast forward. It's now my senior year and him and I have stayed in touch, but not close. But randomly, I got added to his class and switched to doing his online course. Him and I got super close again. I got treated differently. Looking back at it, he'd yell at other kids for not working. But him and I had been talking for 20 minutes and I hadn't touched my computer. Jeez. But he never got mad at me. Oh, God. Then the comments started. Once I was walking to class in a hurry and on the phone, he was behind me and I had no idea. We walked into class together and right before I could open the door, he said into my ear, <gasps> you smell nice. Uh, this is sick. And then proceeded to open the door for me. I smiled and got to work. The following week, I was walking to my friend's car to leave campus to go out to eat for lunch. He saw me and caught up. He asked me if I had big plans. I said no because they were my everyday plans. And he asked me if I wanted to go with him to his truck for lunch. Oh, my God. Absolutely. Fuck no. Maybe I'm playing. I'm playing this all in my head. You are not. Uh, you are not. <laughs> but once we graduated, everyone in my grade messaged me once he got another teacher pregnant. <gasps> Then proceeded to ask me if we hooked up and if we have been in contact. Literally, my whole grade assumed we would hook up once I graduated. He was a young teacher, and I'd be completely lying if I said I didn't want to. Mm. So that's my confession. I went years of my high school years wanting to fuck my teacher, and other students thought he wanted to, too. But I never acted on it. I'm now in a relationship, and he's engaged. I graduated in 2020, and I'm 21 years old now. Love you both, and can't wait to see the episode. That's crazy. The whispering in the ear, dude. No. This is wildly inappropriate. I'm so glad like nothing, nothing happens. physical or more than that. Creep those creepy comments came of it. Yeah. Because ew. For him, like in the beginning when you were like, it was not like 
he was interested in my drama. That's the red flag right there. This grown ass right. man is interested in a seventh grader's drama. No, no, like that's so disgusting. He's weird. Teachers need fucking background checks and like psychological screenings before they're absolutely hired. Like that's absolutely. so inappropriate. This is gross. Congrats, I'm sorry this happened to you. Congrats on your relation, your successful yes. relationship now, though. Yes, happy that you are nowhere around this guy. You're off the market, <laughs> <laughs> off the fucking market. The guy that's crazy. Oh, that's like in we're like I was saying, we're watching Friends yesterday, and Ross oh, is yeah. dating a college girl. I'm like, Ross I is a professor at a college. That, they wrote that in, and he starts dating one of his students. They're 12 years apart. Except, yeah, like said that in the episode too. That's like sure that that one's legal, like whatever. But I'm still like, but still, you wrote that in a show. Like, guys are not your brains are different. Yeah, brains are different. It's just it's a sticky one. But the uh, this seventh grader to a teacher this that's is non negotiable. Like, and, and the fact that you like built that attraction back that is quite like he groomed you. Yeah, that's weird. Okay, enough on that. Enough about that. Yay, confessions part two. These are my confet. That should have been our Aww. song of the day. Confessions part two. Part two. It's way better than part one. Oh yeah. Did part you guys like is- this episode more? Yeah. Is part two better than part one? I love them both. I love the shit. Thank I could you keep doing this for <laughs> writing them in and trusting us with your dirty little secrets. I'll give you my dirty, dirty little secret. secret. That'll be our other song of the day. Right. We have four songs of the days today's today today today's okay guys kristen's gotta go <laughs> <laughs> i do i'm super sleepy i'm so tired I'm wake up period we've got some tv to watch <laughs> <laughs> work to do we're watching love and death on hbo max oh yeah we watched the first episode it's pretty good it's pretty good he's the least bit attractive to me <laughs> Not in like a bad way, but he's built to be this like supposedly attractive char- character that's like luring her out of her relationship. Yeah. And I just, I think it's because, so it's based on a true story and I think uh, maybe that's what he, the, like fits the bill looks like. But yeah, no, I agree. <laughs> She's not super comfortable right now. <laughs> She's going to fall asleep like that. <laughs> All right. Love you guys. Happy Monday. Have Happy a great rest of your week. Monday. Um, oh, the Patreon. We have a Patreon and um, our hella tier. We have Zoom call every week. And that Zoom call is going to be tonight. Monday. Uh, Monday if, you're, if you're listening on Monday. Yes. Uh, Monday the 22nd. And we'll have it at like 730 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. But you will have a Zoom link in your uh, Patreon inbox yes. before this. So we'll see you guys tonight. Rest of you. We'll talk to you when we talk to you. Yeah. Have a great rest of your week. Catch you on the flip side. Go drink some water. Love you. Bye. Bye.